Well, healthcare workers are facing tremendous challenges everywhere from the pandemic, in some places worse than others. And two Savannah nurses have gone where it's worst. Megan Sedell and Elizabeth Landrum have traveled to New York City for an eight-week assignment at one of the city's overstressed hospitals. I chatted remotely with them last night, and they shared a story of sacrifice and service. Megan, Elizabeth, uh, how's everything going so far? It's going really good, really great. A lot, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun, too. Well, well, thank you so much for taking time out of a very busy, very important schedule up there in New York to, to talk with us a little bit. If you don't mind, uh, would you start by just explaining the conditions that you've encountered so far? Um, so I started just over a week ago and went through um, a little less than a week of orientation. I uh, did a full shift on my first week on my own. Um, and then I've done one night on my own already this week. And it's it's very intense. Um, we have great support from staff. We have great support from the community. All the nurses in this ICU are pitching in and nobody's complaining, which is amazing. Um, you know, you have your moments where you would expect people to be complaining, but we're all going through the same thing and we're all in this fight together. So everybody's just working together and doing what they can to support one another. So it's really been, it's very tough, but it's an incredible, it's, in, it's just an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. well, I know you obviously saw what New York looked like before you went up there. Is it as bad, worse as, as you've expected? What's it been like as far as up to your expectations? I mean, to me, it's amazing because there's no traffic, there's no crowds. Um, most amount of people you see is basically on the running path, but right. it's like we drove through Times Square, Central Park, and Queens, and to Brooklyn all the way, like in like a matter of like 30 minutes. It was insane, which I've never been here, and I've never had a desire to come up here because I just don't like traffic and congestion. <laughs> I came up here during a pandemic, and you know, it's, there's none of that, but it's just kind of like shocking because that's all you hear about and that's all you see on all the movies and television and the news and everything, and it's just gone. And as far as in the hospital, um, it's there's a lot of hurting going on. We oh, yeah. need we need a lot of people. We've gotten a lot of people, and we need a lot more people. Mm -hmm. um, but it's bad, and I just read today that this isn't even as bad. Like, they're still expecting us to get worse over the next two weeks. Wow. We haven't hit our peak. Wow. Now, what hospital are you at? We are at NYU, Langone, and Brooklyn. Okay, and, and you're both in the ICU? We are. So you are seeing <laughs> people come in, they're in, they're in rough shape when you see them. They're in really bad shape. Um, most of the patients that I have encountered so far have been there in ICU on ventilators for um, a week or two at the point that I've, I've encountered them. And I mean, they are, they are the sickest patients that you have seen. And because they just keep coming, um, we're trying to come up with spaces to put them and have negative pressure um, for the protection of the staff. Um, our hospital has been amazing with making sure that the staff is well protected as you know as much as possible. But um, we're trying to come up with more spaces to put these patients and the ratios are not ideal for a patient to nurse, but I mean, they just keep coming. You can't, you can't turn them down. So um, we're just doing the best we can and our staff, our um, management has been so supportive of us, um, you know, just get through the night and, and do what you can to make them look a little bit better for the mm -hmm. next shift to come into. So um, it's been, it's a very tough and emotional situation, but it's also very rewarding to be able to be here and take part in it, wow. to use our skill for such a good use. It has to be very stressful. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Well, I got to tell you, it is just remarkable uh, what you're doing up there in New York, you know, where we're, uh, the part of the country that is experiencing this the worst. How did you both arrive at the decision to go there at this particular time? Um, so I was the first one that decided I've been working in the operating room at St. Joseph's and you know, my team has just been amazing. 
Um, I pick up extra shifts in the ICU areas at St. Joseph's occasionally as well. Um, but I can, I started in the operating room about a year ago. So when we did the evacuation for the hurricanes last year, I was not on the hurricane team to go in during the hurricane, but I had to stay close by so that I could get in to relieve the hurricane team as soon as they let everybody back into the city. Yeah. Um, and I would sit there and watch TV and just, it killed me to know that I had the emergency room and the ICU skills to go help out in Texas, but I couldn't leave because my team in Savannah was going to need me as soon as I, you know, as soon as they allowed everybody back in surgeries, were going to, you know, start again. Um, so I had to stay by the phone and it was, you know, there were multiple nights that I was in tears about it because um, it just tugged on my heartstrings so bad. And I told my husband, Daryl, then I said, you know, if something like this ever happens again, I'm, I'm going to go, I, I need to go. Um, and he said, okay. And <laughs> so I was floating the idea around. Um, originally things were worse in Seattle and then um, things were really bad in New York and New York is the city that I have always loved. My mom always tells me I have a romanticized view of New York. Um, and it's lived up to everything that I love about it. Um, and I've been here before and I, I have always loved the city. I've always loved the people. So, um, my husband is a golf caddy and it never occurred to me that he wouldn't be able to caddy during this time because it's an outdoor sporting event that keeps you healthy. So why wouldn't he be able to caddy? But when we found out that he wasn't going to really be able to caddy this spring, um, you know, our, our lifestyle took a hit. And so I looked at my husband and I said, that's it. I'm going, um, I'm, you know, I can't wait and see if it's okay anymore. I, I need to go. And so from Friday at 5 PM, when I found out that he wasn't going to be working, um, I had a contract signed by Sunday and walked in wow. sick to my stomach to tell my manager that I was wow. going, how do we want to handle it? Um, but she was amazing and she has allowed me to take a, a leave of absence for the eight week assignment, as well as, um, two weeks of quarantine when I get done, just right. to make sure I don't have it. Um, and then I'll be able to return to the operating room at St. Joseph's, which I just feel so blessed to be able to rejoin that family. Unbelievable. So you're there eight weeks. Yes. And, uh, and I mean, I guess you, have you had any indication that there will be progress made in that time and, and that by the time you're ready to leave, we may have turned a corner in any way? I am hopeful that we'll turn a corner. The statistics are showing that we should peak in the next week or two and things should start letting up a little bit by then. Um, I don't think we'll be out of the woods by then. Um, just based on different things I'm hearing and seeing, but I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that New York is getting back to its fully functional. Mm -hmm. You know, the city that never sleeps is very sleepy right now, and it's mm -hmm. it's hard to see. It really is. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both so much for what you're doing up there. Thank you for taking some time to talk to us and explain it to the folks here back in, in uh, the Coastal Empire, uh, just what you're seeing. And please, please do everything you can to stay safe. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having us, Tim. Thanks. All right, guys, thanks. Well, the nurses say they have had no trouble so far accessing the emergency equipment they need, like masks and gowns, and that they've been instructed by the company who sent them up there on a traveling nurse assignment that if they ever get in a situation where they can't get those items, they are to leave the hospital immediately.